Simon, we're in your hands. So perhaps you. Firstly, are we starting with your budget papers five, six, eight onwards? Is that Correct. Thank okay. you, Mr. So, Mayor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, well, it has been so far. <laughs> it's, just continue be, to be the bearer of good it's, news and it'll go well. well. <laughs> it's beginning to warm up. <laughs> um, oh, but as we stand between you and the end of the day, I leave it in your hands. That's what I say okay. to colleagues all the time. Yes. Uh, so first of the strategy engagement budgets up uh, relates to strategic projects, which now with some change in budget structures and reporting, uh, it's myself and Simon and Jeff are covered in this budget, uh, which covers the policy and strategy unit, the business incentives unit, and and the um, costs that go with uh, myself. Uh, so um, I probably would just like to highlight um, that the budget numbers are essentially status quo in the sense that, that it's existing staffing and it's predominantly staffing and there are not huge material changes in the amounts other than uh, you know what has been assumed in relation to things like training and such like. I would like um, uh, Jeff to just kind of highlight what we see as some of the issues and risks to consider. Um, we're not seeking uh, at this time a response to that, but we just need you to be aware of those as we go into 2021. Jeff. Thank you. I guess what we're anticipating is a central government agenda because a, a reform agenda that will uh, keep us fairly busy as a council in terms of being able to respond to central government initiatives. In particular, the reform of the Resource Management Act is something which uh, is very high on the agenda for the for this government. And there'll be two major pieces of legislation to replace the RMA. So we need to keep on our toes. We don't think that there's going to be any pre-consultation. We just think that there's going to be draft legislation and go straight into a select committee process so unlike the climate change legislation of the previous uh, three years, where we had an opportunity to um, go through a consultative process, we don't anticipate that that will occur with the RMA reform. Already the Randerson report has gone through that sort of public consultation. So uh, the government's intention is to implement the Randerson review and so it, there won't be a great deal of opportunity to uh, have input apart from through the select committee process. Coupled with that is a fairly busy program from the regional council as well. They've already um, flagged that they intend to have a revision of the regional policy statement and the regional coastal plan. So they've got budget from ECAN to undertake those uh, reforms and uh, those reviews so we need to keep on our toes in terms of a response from this council in relation to that. The other thing on the horizon from my perspective is that we've often responded to Productivity Commission inquiries and the Productivity Commission is, uh, is uh, dependent on getting instructions from the Minister for Finance and there's been a brand new chair to the Productivity Commission appointed in Ganesh Nana. Now, Ganesh would probably be familiar to a lot of us because he headed up the Bureau of Economic Research Limited, and now he's uh, been appointed as the chair of the Productivity Commission. So that will give a, uh, a helpful sort of entree because he's very familiar with local government having been uh, appointed by Soldium over the years to do the, the price level of justice uh, on a regular basis. So I'm anticipating that a, quite a bit of more activity from the Productivity Commission too, as uh, the government looks at New Zealand's productivity and some of the inquiries that might come from the Minister for Finance. Uh, i just very briefly add to that. Of course, we know Three Waters reform process will be moving at pace during this year. There will be um, 
uh, identification of what the entities are going to be uh, around March, April. There'll be a mandatory uh, consultation to be done with the community later in the year, but it suspends all the ordinary consultation processes that there are under the Local Government Act. Uh, so there will be a bill uh, to amend the LGA um, that will need to go to select committee that uh, truncates the engagement that will happen around the three water reforms um, to require councils to consult on the basis of a standard national proposal. Uh, so we will have views about that. So. Uh, and then, of course, there is an emerging agenda of the future of local government in the general sense. So there will be a new steering group between uh, government, uh, Solgum and LGNZ, and that work stream will be getting underway at, at quite a pace. So, look, all we're trying to do, take the opportunity while we've all got you, uh, to just highlight at the beginning of the year, and we won't, we'll try not to, Come, come at you with surprises, but, but articulate a program that will be an, an extensive program of consideration of pretty fundamental issues around local government through 2021 and 2022. And we'll obviously be doing our best uh, within the uh, limits of the resourcing that we do have um, to uh, provide you the opportunity to articulate yourselves as a council, but also probably ultimately more importantly on behalf of a community, um, what is in the best interest of the Waimakariri community through, through all of that. And at times you are going to be frustrated because you will not have the opportunity to test community views on this. Um, so uh, uh, that's not a, a, a mean intentionally a gun to your head, but it is that we're going to be in for a pretty rocky ride in 2021 on a, on a whole range of fronts apart from all of the day job and getting and delivering the programs that you want to have delivered for the community. Um, so with that, um, I, Simon, I'm not sure if there's any more introduction. You considered the Town Centre's program report this morning and we thank you for, um, for uh, deciding that as a program because that really helps us as an organisation, as staff, but also the community get a sense of um, intent and momentum that is multi-year and undoubtedly uh, within that program timings and scale of projects will as new information comes to hand uh, change um, but it is then able to be considered in, within a framework uh, rather than blow by blow and so it saves you and I think uh, the community and us uh, it's an efficient way of working uh, but still with all of the re requisite accountabilities in place. Simon, anything else that you want? Okay. Um, so, uh, happy to answer any questions on the budget amounts for what's still called strategy and engagement on pages 574 through to 576. Any questions? Thanks, Simon. Simon and Jeff, any questions? Great. Okay. Oh, sorry, hold on. Sorry. Oh. I just can't see any efficiencies you've got here compared with all yours big increases on everything, but no um, no extra things you're doing, what you normally did. How come you can be so much dearer on your forecast and not see anything extra you're getting from your... Uh, so, the, thank you for the question, Councillor. So the core costs are the existing staff complement and there is no additional staff, there's no less staff. So these are costs that go with the current program. Built into this budget, however, are increases that are reflected out of the town centre's uh, program of work that you approved this morning. So there are, there are some lines here that are, that are increased as a result of that. But if you have specific lines that you're interested in, happy to answer questions on that. Can you use the, can you use the mic? The, the accommodation cost seems to be uh, greater than what other area have from 68,000 budget to um, budget 21-22 to 77. So I, that's, no that, extra staff. that's a question 
that relates to the property budget in terms of the way that overhead is spread. So I have no control over that. I'm not criticising that budget, but it is determined outside of this, and it's an amount that is inserted into this budget. So I think the time for discussion of the accommodation costs and it's allocations tomorrow. is tomorrow. Any other questions or any general comments? But Simon, can I just, uh, I've been saying this to staff as we've been going through, but it has been a particularly busy year. And uh, I know that I've really appreciated the support that as a council we get from a strategic policy perspective. You know, there's not, nothing that we aren't well briefed on uh, or that you haven't thought of in advance whenever I need to call on some advice or assistance with submissions that we've had to do at the drop of a hat really appreciated that Jeff has uh, certainly helped me with a number of select committee um, submissions and that was a new learning curve for me because I hadn't done them before so um, I really appreciated um, that support that we get to the Greater Christchurch work uh, and that's where you really add your value Simon um, in general but you, you're not your relationships in there are really important to us to understand and unpick some of that work that we're doing so Thank you very much to you and the team for what you do. We've acknowledged Simon and Vanessa and others this morning uh, in their um, space too, but I know increasingly that our developers and people that are working in the space do appreciate that uh, advice that they're getting So, uh, in that work that's being done. So thank you to you and your team. Really appreciate it. Yes. Yep. So four point seven. That's tab nine uh, in diligent team. Thank you. And that's the COVID nineteen recovery. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, this is the COVID recovery uh, program update. And uh, the purpose of this report is really just to provide a general update on the overarching economic environment as we navigate our way through uh, level one still in, in, the, in the New Zealand COVID environment. The report also importantly uh, lists the 27 uh, recovery actions uh, that we have and uh, lists some progress against those actions along with some recommendations as, a, as to whether we should continue or discontinue each one of those 27 actions. Uh, the report also talks a little bit about the community team's great work in the social recovery space and the recommendations in the report seek to support some of that continued work. You'll note that there was a successful bid for up to $700,000 <coughs> of central government funding for the projects shown in section 4.16 of the report. Uh, there is a bid into the Department of Internal Affairs for around 100000 for facilitation of that, that program of work. Um, you'll note also in the recommendations that we have made provision for up to $300,000 uh, of additional funding from the COVID recovery fund. That is to support uh, a few things. One, one is that if we don't, if we're not successful in that uh, uh, application to the Department of Internal Affairs, we would be able to cover that. There's some project management funding that is potentially required for the Kaipoi hub, and there's also some impacts on the aquatic facilities operation that that money would also help cover. Of course, we, we won't draw down on that, that funding uh, without coming back to Council to define exactly what that is uh, close, uh, when we're aware of those, those numbers and the, the application results. Uh, section 4, uh, in addition to covering some economic environment information, talks a little bit about the unemployment and workforce underutilisation, along with beneficiary numbers in the district up to quarter 3, 2020. Um, section 4.2, 2, that's the table of the 27 projects. About eight of those projects we're suggesting should be placed on hold or discontinued. Uh, for multiple reasons, some, some of those projects have been superseded by other work. Some of them uh, were uh, aimed at um, seeing, see, we, we put out there to see whether the Economic Recovery Advisory Group would support some of those. They, they haven't necessarily supported them and we don't think that it's appropriate to continue them. Uh, and some, some relate to ENC work as well, the Enterprise North Canterbury work that, that's in there. So 
Um, we've, we've put forward those recommendations to continue the majority, but discontinue some of those. Uh, happy to take any questions that councillors might have about, about that report in general. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Blackie? Can you comment a bit further on only 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 utilising seven hundred thousand of the of the two of the two mil, um, um, you know, fund? Every time we pick up a newspaper, we see the all the well the welfare agencies are at their limits. Food banks, Sally's, um, you name it. Um, what, why have we only allocated a third of the money we have to allocate? Are you keeping more in reserve? Um, I, I might default to Jim or, or Jeff in that what I understand was that the, the total anticipated funding initially through our COVID projections for uh, council related activities in COVID was around 2.1 million. Of that, we've only drawn down 700,000. That's how I understand it. Yeah, so when we put together that budget of 2.1, that was to anticipate continue, you know, continuing COVID events, uh, funding shortfalls and things like aquatic facilities, possibly our building, uh, building consenting business, our uh, PDU and water unit uh, weren't able to run at full capacity and we're not eligible for subsidy for any of that from the government wage subsidy. So carrying and holding some of that cost plus possibly some economic interventions and support to the local community one form or another, that's, we put a finger in the air and said, well, that's something to give us a bit of, uh, to come and go on. And thankfully, and we're all touching with flat tack that we don't, that we a haven't needed as much of that, and b we hope we don't. So um, now, you know, to be fair, since we put that together, today's risk profile doesn't isn't the same as the risk profile we had when we um, developed this budget, and so there is a risk between now and deliberation time that uh, things go south, and we might you. you you, like we did last year, need to rethink about what our plan looks like and uh, that, that remains a real risk for this process. So if things carry on as they are and we don't end up back in lockdown, um, then we're not seeing a large draw. We're, our business units are generally returning um, or performing well. Uh, pools, I think, are down just a bit but there's there's more things than just COVID around that but offset building and resource consent activity is at levels which um, we'd be quite ha happy if they were a bit lower so um, yeah that's a brief summary Thank you. that money was actually intended for for well for direct welfare benefit payments is that correct and what from what you're saying no one's asking no one's asking you for for additional we, funding at the we we had the economic recovery advisory group and it was anticipated that some of that may need to be applied to initiatives whether it was promotion for business or or support one form or another and we met i was going to say regularly but periodically um and the group has really not identified any particular need that it feels intervention by council would be beneficial or needed. So, no, we haven't made any direct payment, but Simon was going to make some observation there. Um, it wasn't so much in relation to that, that particular question um, per se, but just to note that we are intending for the Economic Recovery Advisory Group to meet again in March. We sort of um, I pretty much agree that with those folk at the back end of last year. And um, you've uh, confirmed some funding for us to substantially refresh our um, economic, rec uh, economic development strategy. And it may well be that, that the ERAG group functions in the future as a, like a reference group to that work stream since it's very, very aligned and provides a um, a pretty good forum of giving current um, strategic level um, kind of business perspective um, for <coughs> as we try and um, articu uh, articulate that 
albeit in a time of still pretty high level of uncertainty as to how we're going to track. Alan, in general, look, I get quite a number of requests through the office for specific support for people who are in particularly difficult circumstances. In a lot of instances, we, um, through networks, can find them funding or find support for them or advocate for them. So Lions are a really good source, Rotary and other organisations. I've got a small, very small mural relief fund um, and I have used it a couple, on a couple of occasions where I can't find support elsewhere for some people. Enough for firewood and, and the likes. Um, and, and look, there was a case just before Christmas of a very desperate couple that had gone everywhere and what made a real difference to their life was actually buying them a washing machine. It was $400. Um, so very limited amounts that we can help, but we generally find support on a welfare since through working with Tessa and the team and Hope Trust and the other organisations to support people when, they, when, when we're aware of the help that they require. So that's the, just to give you a snapshot of the sort of welfare related matters that come by that we can help people with. Shout out there to the um, community team with Tessa. They're mm -hmm. extremely well networked, and if they can sniff out some money, they will. Yeah, they do. A, a Tessa and the team do an absolutely fantastic job. All right, uh, any other questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, apologies. Just, just a few, Mr. Mayor. I just, uh, um, I just note and just proves that I do read things every now and again. Um, in recommendation G, notes that this, sh notes, should this application be unsuccessful or not, is unsuccessful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. When you're moving that, you'll uh, move there. <laughs> I'll move that, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, Councillor Barnett, any? I didn't think there was any other questions. Um, all right. Would you like to speak? No, no, not really. Just to say, well, look, thanks, and, and and you've obviously kept the purse strings very close to your to our heart on our behalf. So thank you for that, and um, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, I did wonder at one point whether there should be another line in there that does cover us between now and deliberation um, that says we could draw on this. And, and it's, I suppose that's a question now. Um, see, you jumped the uh, recommendation on me, Mr Mayor. Um, <laughs> whether we should have something in there that's just a bit of a backstop between then and now and then without having to come back here to do something if something did happen. We would probably be talking with you one way or another between now and then and, and even getting an informal nod uh, to any expenditure from this fund and ratifying it afterwards if that occurred. Adrian, you, Adrian, you picked up the change to G. Yes. Um, Councillor Ballard. Oh, just very quickly to say is um, I'm on the SSW committee so I hear about a lot of the groups who have, and, and the money's been there. And the, these people are just amazing at finding money, and Tess is one of them. Um, but all of the team, like everything from Kaipo Community Trust, Wellbeing, Oxford Community Trust, all of them, um, they, they the money was there, they were very onto it, and um, they've received an awful lot of money for the community. So much so that actually some of the food banks were saying, no, no, don't give us food just at the moment, just hold off for a bit. <laughs> so that's it. really, really great that we've had that support in our district, that we've had people in place and the networks in place to be able to get that going, and a lot of that is due to our community team. So it's a huge kudos to them, and um, huge kudos to Simon for, for leading the way, and thank you for taking on that, that role. Um, we've had a, a share of disasters and, and, and opportunities in the last um, 10 years and it's just so great to see how agile we can be and how with our leadership team and with, our, with staffing and with that council that we can actually get on and do something so quickly um, and I'm sure that will happen if anything else crops up which I'm hoping it won't. Thank you. Any further speakers? Councillor Duty? Yes, also, thank you very much, but we also would like really to mention for our communities, how they all step up and, and help, and that's really important. So um, we're, in, we're in a healthy situation living in the Waimaka area, although we have some people that are really struggling, but we've got a lot of people that are ready to put their hands out to help. Okay. Any further speakers? Right for fire. I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, declare that carried.
Great. Thanks, Simon and Jeff. Simon, you can stay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come forward to the stand, that's right. <laughs> Swear on the Bible. <laughs> So team, pages five, seven, eight. Um, Alistair, welcome. So feel, um, if you want to take us through um, the highlights of your report and anything you want to draw to our attention. Page five, uh, Sophie, yep, you're all good. Um, this very much is a, uh, a rollover budget. Um, there are there are no new items added to the budget for for this year as the the majority of changes went through in the previous annual plan uh you used the mic sorry thank you so thanks to the council look in the last um couple of years we've um with alistair's um significant involvement we've refreshed the communications and engagement framework um, we've brought in house graphic design we've you've committed funding to support communications around the district plan review and major projects uh, we've got a great team um, of of really good people and we're achieving some economies with in-house delivery of graphic design um, and uh, in-house resourcing of our district plan related communications rather than engaging uh, contractors. So I think the team is right sized at this point in time uh, and we have um, management team was um, pleased to get a briefing uh, from Alistair and Zara around the current project which is the um, re rework of um, our, our existing website which is getting very cluttered and clumsy at that high level um, and um, also preparing that for clearer delineation of people coming to our website for service as opposed to information as opposed to engagement and seeking to customize that um, significant presence to whether you're a resident or whether you're a business uh, a visitor what what do you want to do today so that's a project that will come back to you during the year um, uh, through Neville as the portfolio holder um, for further uh, discussion please to answer any questions thank you any questions councillor duty oh you are just uh, enthusiastically waving your hand excellent <laughs> councillor stewart thank you um, just um, I note that the um, is that the graphic design is in in house? You've got an extra sixty k. Um, what what have you actually saved by bringing it in house rather than outsourcing? Um. So when uh, when I put that through uh, last year, what I did was I looked at the average spend year on year with an external agency we'd been using called Beck and Call, mm. and uh, on average we were spending about one hundred seventeen thousand dollars a year on uh, graphic design through them. Um, having someone in-house, we can get through uh, so far what seems through three times the amount of work for a significantly lower cost. Thank you. Is that a question this time, Councillor Devin? Yes. <laughs> or just, you, you've got a question? <coughs> you use the mic, please. Thank you. Yes, I'm just wondering if perhaps uh, for the at some council uh, some time in the, for the council, if you'd like to bring your team in just to say hello to us and and just um, give us an update, would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, I'd be more than happy to. I've got a, a briefing uh, with you guys in early March, so I'll bring the team along to that. Excellent. Do you have any other questions? So, any general comments? Well, I, I, I've been saying this to all staff, but um, we do get a lot of support from you one to one, Alistair. Um, uh, and I do appreciate the advice and the quality of advice. Like, there's a lot that we don't realise just the level of media inquiry we get. Um, we probably do appreciate that, but um, it's well all well managed and within the team. 
Um, there's a really good environment I see down near Alistair and the quality um, of work and even the design work we, that's coming through. It's clear um, and even through the COVID period all that um, the support that was given and all that extra communication work so it is certainly appreciated and I, I remember when I first came on board those that were around at that time we had a very minimal <laughs> communication resource back to Finney um, to where we are now and just looking at the quality of, of that um, support we get the website's well overdue so I'm really pleased that that's um, being addressed and look forward to further updates on that from, um, from you and the team and good luck with that project because um, it's, it's important that resource for us. So thanks Alistair. So, Mia, um, there's just one uh, report that's relevant, uh, not to the budget, but uh, on page 138 to 151. It's a um, re refresh of the significance and engagement policy, and I'll leave Alistair to introduce that. So that's, which one's? 4. 4. 4, sorry, 4.5. Okay. So, um, yeah, so 138, Alistair. Um, so you may remember uh, in I believe it was late November, I came and briefed the council on the updates to this policy. There are no huge material updates to it. Um, I'm a believer in that if it's you know not broken, it doesn't require being fixed. Um, what I have done is I've expanded on what's called the IAP2 metric in that, and that's an acronym for the International Association of Public Participation. Um, this is the engagement metric that's used um, essentially uniformly across uh, central and local government departments uh, in New Zealand and Australia and I've really just expanded on that because through uh, avenues such as the Mahitahi Committee we're starting to see uh, I guess more use of things like the empowerment metric um, but otherwise uh, no significant changes. Right. Okay. Any questions? Did you want to oh, add something, Simon? Oh, just a very brief addition. Look, uh, this is a this is a statutory requirement to have a significance and engagement policy. Um, uh, where the real um, uh, value of this is the guidance that it gives that comes from it, and so the team is refreshing our guidance across the organisation and in, in engagement. Uh, we, you know that we are an engage, you, we are an engaging organisation and more likely than not to be out in the community or be seeking the views of groups. Um, but, but some of the feedback is we're quite uneven in that um, in terms of uh, by, by uh, geographic area or by, by topic. And we really want to cut more, um, underpin our quality of our engagement with the community so the guidance and the training then roll out that goes with that um, will be designed to do that and again later this year you'll probably you'll be having some more engagement with Alistair and the team around that. Thank you. Um, any questions? Got a recommendation someone prepared to move? Uh, moved by Council Meetings, seconded by Council Meetings. If you are, can you use your mic? Thank you. Not much to say except that um, I really commend your commitment to continuous improvement and all the work that you've done in this space. We have put you through your paces this year with the things that have come up and you guys have worked hard and um, done very well with it. I do like the, um, sorry, the, the matrix, um, the, was it IAP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that really simplifies things and, and um, clarifies just what exactly we're doing with regards to our communication, and that's really handy too. Um, yeah, really, just keep up the good work, and um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Any further speakers? I'll put the recommendation, unless you wish to reply to yourself. <laughs> I'll put the recommendation. All those in favor, please say aye. Contrary to clear that carry. All right, thanks Alistair. So Simon, we've just got a further report, I think under economic uh, economic development tab. Oh, so, why don't we do, 
why don't we why don't we you want would you just dash your team up as you see fit um Thanks, Marie. Welcome, by the way. Thank you. Okay, so um, this year um, we've updated some of our revenue figures and um, limbs income. We've got a substantial increase because uh, volumes have done uh, completely the opposite than what uh, we were told they would. And uh, we're looking at uh, 238,000 income just till the end of December this year. So we've upped that to 380,000 for the coming year. We have put uh, the commission from ECAN, collection of ECAN rates up to about the level that we're paying or receiving in the current year. And we've got the rates discount expense. We've adjusted that uh, more in line to what we are allowing now in discount. And I guess the key issue for me is the request for another staff member in our phones team at Rangura. The council approved the addition of a a cadet type role last year that was left out when we needed to adjust the budgets and we're asking for that position again because the phones team are really under pressure and we have been using casual staff quite a lot during the busy periods. We're looking at a new phone system that's more of a unified communication system so we're at the moment we've got um, the telephone calls coming into one queue, emails coming into an email box, um, they'll all be coming into the same queue so it's going to be a lot um, I guess more efficient and easier to manage and we feel that with that and an additional staff member that that will fix the issues we have with staff burning out during that sort of middle of the year when everything happens. We're hoping um, that this role will appeal to a young person because there's a lot of opportunity for great careers in local government and it would be really good to be able to get somebody in to start, look at what's available, hopefully do a few years in customer services before moving somewhere else and um, yeah, just, just uh, I guess balance the, um, the age dynamic in the, in the team as well. Okay. Thank you, Marie. Um, is there any questions of Marie in the budget papers there? No? Uh, Councillor Dooney? Yeah, Marie, when do you propose to perhaps bring this person on board? It would be in July, August. That's okay. when the budget's available. Hopefully. Okay. Any other questions of Marie? Um, so we, uh, as I do at this point, if anyone wishes to add anything in the general comments. Well, look, thanks Marie. Um, um, you, you and your team do a great job and I know we all work with you very closely with dealing with some of our more trying people at times. Um, and uh, one that I uh, can't specifically talk about it here, but we did have a very difficult circumstance which through the work that you and your team have done have turned that around and uh, that was really something I think um, you should be particularly proud of that was uh, and there'll be an opportunity to brief Thank the you. council at some stage about that but um, and even last week we had someone in that was um, difficult to say the least um, and uh, I think the way that that was handled was was excellent because you're often the front face of things with customer when you are the front face with customer service so 
thank you to what you and your team do, and I fully support the additional resource. So, thank you. And, um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just want to um, note and commend the customer services team, particularly during the COVID period, haven't really had an opportunity to do that. And um, just the um, incredible way they divided themselves into two teams and um, maintained a really high level of customer service as best was as possible in really exceptional circumstances. And to some extent that sort of translated into current arrangements with an interim um, customer services desk at Rangiora and a different entrance and all of that, the, the actual and potential disruption that that um, presents. Uh, and just briefly take the opportunity to note that Karen Friedauer uh, retires at the end of this year after a very long record, sorry, at the end of this week, <laughs> sorry, um, after a very long um, loyal and uh, period of service to the Waimakari District Council and the community. So thank you. Would you say 25 years now? Yeah, it's a big service. 25 years, I think. Yeah, big service. Um, thanks. Short so. of three months. <laughs> thank, thanks, Marie. Appreciate that. Um, that's your your budget's dealt with. So thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm me. Yes. Oh, the yes. I'm sorry. Yes, there is too. Uh, rates remission policy. So it's um, tab 11. Um, 4.9. Yeah, that's reasonably <laughs> important. Yeah. Just testing to see if your guys are awake. <clears throat> you passed. It's two reports actually, that's right, 4.10 as well. So, Marie, do you want to take us through your reports? The first one is on um, proposed changes to rates for emissions policy that we discussed um, at a September briefing and um, the council indicated our willingness to reduce the interval at which people could ask for rates penalty remissions. Currently it was four years or is four years and we were accused of being stingy and um, the council was agreeable at that time to reducing it to two years. And that put, would put us in line with most of the other councils um, that we that we surveyed. The other uh, the other one was on the policy for remission of rates on residential properties in um, commercial and business zones, where due to the the high ratio of land value to capital value, those properties. Um, end up paying quite high rates on land value. At the moment that really only impacts on the urban drainage rates because that's the only one that we've got left on uh, on land value but it does, um, they are quite out of kilter with other residential properties so it's definitely worth continuing with this remission policy but um, what we're asking is that it be limited to those owner occupied properties um, within those zones and that we don't include the properties that are used as uh, rental properties or the new purpose-built apartment type buildings. Okay. Thanks Marie. Any questions? Councillor Dugan? Thank you Marie. Just how many houses would be involved in that particular, how many dwellings would be involved in that? We only have nine houses receiving the remission now mm -hmm. and it would reduce to four. Right, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> My house apparently. <laughs> Still won't move out. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, any further questions? Moved by Councillor Atkinson, seconded by Councillor Doody. Do you wish to speak? Just to say that those that uh were stingy at uh, uh, four years as opposed to two. I clearly don't know our accountant. So um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for this. I mean, it is, we've discussed it and I, thank you for the report, it is good. Okay, and 
Yeah, I, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Marie. It's been very ha helpful with you coming and doing briefings for us because it's keeping us right up to date with everything. And this is just making this plain sailing for us to go through. So thank you. Thank okay. you. Any further speakers? I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour of this say aye. Contrary to clear that it carried. Then we now move to 4.10, um, which is tab 12. Thanks, Marie. On the Ash collection of Ashley water rates. Okay, this um, the Ashley Ashley water rates on properties in the Waimakariri district have historically been collected by the Hurunui District Council, and that just has been happening since um, the amalgamation in 1989. It was part of the reorganisation order that the Hurunui Council managed that water scheme. And um, they, since then, they've been sending rates assessments out to ratepayers in that northern part of the district that are connected to the scheme. That doesn't entirely fit within the rating legislation, um, but it has worked quite successfully. Uh, we feel that it's probably time to change that so that we do comply. If, for example, somebody refused to pay the Huronui rates, they wouldn't be able to um, collect those through the courts because it wouldn't legally be a rate. You, a council can't rate in somebody else's district. Uh, so we've talked about it for a few years and there's other advantages in this council taking it over. One is that um, notices of sale when properties change hands all come to this council. They don't necessarily go to Hiranui as well. And even though we've got systems in place where we send them reports every month on what's changed hands, um, they don't always get the information and it's difficult for them to then chase up overdue amounts when people have moved on. So it's um, definitely a more streamlined administration. Um, we'll work with them because obviously we're going to need to give them information back on who the property owners and contact details are. So if there are issues with the water supply, they can uh, they can contact them quickly and make sure that they get all of the information that the other users of the scheme have. Uh, we've got a draft um, memorandum of agreement with the Hiranui Council and uh, that is going to their council as well. And we're just recommending that um, the Chief Executive be authorised to complete that agreement with the Hiranui District Council. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Redmond, sorry. <laughs> it's been a moment. Thank you, Your Worship. Marie, yeah. um, when pe people <laughs> inquire, um, lawyers in particular, about rates for apportionment, <coughs> well, under this new system, will you actually be able to answer that question about the Hiranui water rates? Yes. Or will they, so they yeah. won't have to contact Hiranui? No, we'll be able to tell them what is, because they're on it, they'll just be another line on our rates assessment, so it'll be included in that. Um, we will probably still advise that the property is on the Hiranui water supply because yeah, there is going to be a relationship needed between that property owner and Hiranui for the supply of water. Um, at the moment we do tell tell the solicitors and the inquiries that the property is on that water supply, but we don't always have the up-to-date details about the rates. The other thing with rates rebates is that when people come in and they're paying Hiranui water rates, we have to include that on the rates rebates that we do and people don't always have that information available, although we do try to have it here. So it's going to streamline that as well. So you would envisage only one notice of sale, which would come to us, but there must be a mechanism for notifying Hiranui that yes. the ownership is changed. And, and that's what we're working out. It, it's, it's going to be a two-way communication. We'll need to notify Hiranui when properties change hands and they'll need to notify us when water units change or new consumers come on board. So we'll work out a, a two-way communication so that each party is getting the information. 
yeah, I, I actually support this. So, but the questions around information that, that uh, Councillor Redmond was just talking about, but, but, but a little different in the respect that if uh, her and her decide they're going to have a 20% water rate increase next year, um, and we're showing the water, the line on mm. uh, how are we going to do the communication to say, well, you know, because it looks like buck passing when they come in our door and go, no, no, sorry, not us, go and submit to her and Nui, even though we're charging. What's our, um, I don't know what do you call it, scheme around dealing with that sort of situation? Because that puts you guys in a, in a bit of an awkward position. It's a little bit like um, what we do with Environment Canterbury now. Um, you know, they, they will tell us you know, what their rates increases are and give us information so we can answer basic questions and if there is a 20 percent increase then there, there should be a reason for that and they would need to consult with our our ratepayers in the same way that they're doing that with their own so our ratepayers will be as aware as the Hiranui people on what that increase would be um, we can answer it to a certain level and then when it gets too hot to handle, we can pass it on to, to the other council. So, so will it be a separate invoice within Life of Is with Ekin if it's complete? No, no. We we had a, a legal opinion mm. on this. Well, it's really only of benefit to us if we can have it as a line on our rates assessment because if we have to start using a separate ledger and having a um, an additional rates assessment and invoice then the economies or the benefits of, of doing it um, even though we probably still need to do it because it, um, it currently doesn't comply um, the most efficient way of doing it and the most cost effective way is having it as a single line on our um, rates assessment so that account will be in this council's accounts and we'll have an expenditure item payment to Hiranui District Council. And so we'll collect the money on their behalf and just pay it over. Um, it's a wee bit different than what we're doing with ECAN and that they've got their own separate ledger. They charge their you know, penalties on their rates, which go to them. Um, with the Hiranui rates, we will keep the penalties and pay them the total amount of the rates struck each year. And we will keep the arrears and collect the arrears and any, keep any penalties that are charged. It's, it's probably no different to what we're doing now, in effect, that we're making it more open and disclosed. So most of the people that I've talked to that know about it, that are on staff, have gone, yay, uh, we'll pay our rates through you. Um, so basically we have no option to do it anyway, uh, because at the moment they could go to the Huronui District Council and say well, we're not paying this and legally we, they, couldn't, we, they couldn't charge them. So basically we just have to make sure that we have an agreement uh, of what we're disclosing in both our uh, annual plans to make sure it's quite clear that we're collecting those rates on behalf. When, when people are on that supply they're pretty well, they pretty well know they're actually on the Huronui water scheme but they know they're actually um, uh, WDC uh, ratepayers, in effect. So it's just making sure that, if anything, um, we're looking after our ratepayers uh, and making sure we're disclosing the full costs of them. Exactly that, around the comms of that, because if you, um, they'll get their, their rate demand with the uh, with the new charge on it won't come from Hiranui automatically to a lot of people that have been there for some time will go oh good we've just gone to the WiMAX scheme so what are the comms around with these people that we're going to be uh, putting out there to let them know that we are only exactly that the rates collector and your scheme doesn't change yeah our expectations if they're having a large um, increase is that we'd um, have an expectation that they do a separate consultation like we would no, i don't mean increases i'm talking about they're going to get it they're going to get their rates bill next year it's going to have a line on it that says rates for her and but where are the comms to these oh, people that that is the change because they're just going to assume that they're on the ymax scheme they've been changed over now that we all know that's wrong, but yeah, once um, once both of the councils have agreed 
to the change, uh, Hiranui District Council will be sending out the initial communication to um, to the consumers on the scheme explaining what is happening because we don't want them thinking they're on the Rangura on a Waimakariri scheme because um, if there are any issues with the scheme, any outages, they need to communicate with Hiranui. So they'll be making that quite clear to them. So so when the rate demand goes out for the year, it could have a she do have capacity in there to perhaps put a letter in explaining that. Yes. And, yes. and is there the ability on the invoice to put in brackets something collected on behalf of Haranui District Council? Under There's that? probably not room on the rates, but we could have something on the we could have something on the back of the notice. Mm. Yeah, just just so it's clear. Okay. Any other questions? Right, we we have a recommendation. Someone prepared to move? Move by Councillor Williams, seconded by Councillor Redmond. Do you wish to speak? Councillor Redmond. Uh, just to say, it seems pretty logical to me. It was always a nightmare for lawyers working out uh, what to apportion, and it can be easily overlooked if you're not tipped off and you're not a local. Um, it just creates a wee bit more administration, I suspect, for you. And I might have to talk to colleagues about why is it a Huranui water scheme and not one of ours? But that's a separate issue. Um, further speakers? Uh, oh, look, I'm going to support this. I think it makes sense. Um, I think as long as there's a, a good letter that goes out within the rates demand that explains that clearly, and then if there's ongoing, just so it is clear, some way of explaining that on the invoice somewhere, that would be um, really helpful. Um, because we've, uh, but you know, it's, I, I kind of liken it to the fact that if they were, if they are our rate payers. If Hiranui weren't supplying the water, we would be uh, in any event. So it would be um, something that we would be doing. And when we've got a representative uh, on this water scheme and counts the Williams, so that's our accountability there. And I guess we'll get a heads up through there if there's any major changes. One thing I was heartened with recently was that. Hamish, the CEO, was saying to both Councillor Williams and myself just the large investment that our ratepayers are getting over there through the shovel ready. They're investing quite a lot of money into the upgrade of that scheme um, and upgrading the quality. So we do have a very close relationship with Hiranui, so I'm not seeing a problem there. We have been talking about ECAN this morning and where they're heading in some of their rates and we do have our concerns with that which we'll address in our internal forums that we've got but um, there's a concern if they're heading in that level and we're collecting it so that's probably Marie where the reservation's coming from this morning because uh, some of their projections are looking fairly interesting and the accountability around that and the bottom line is the things that concern us I guess so it's just a reality of what people think when they get that bill in. So. And you'll know that from um, past experience yourself. Yeah. All right, any further speakers? Right reply, Ms Williams. I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour, aye. aye. Contrary, declare that carried. Aye. All right, so that's um, um, the noise. We're now up to um, uh, deve uh, development planning. Um, so Trevor. Thanks, Marie. Trevor, do you want to take it through? Your yes, pages certainly. are um, we just uh, it's five, page nine, five. five nine five. Yes, thanks, Trevor. Thank you. And uh, one, one of the papers was withdrawn uh, that we Sarah emailed last night that wasn't intended to be included in there, as I yes, understand. Yes, it's all right. It's good as gold. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, this um, budget relates to the Development Planning Unit. I guess it primarily has a focus around the District Plan Review at the stage of proceedings. Uh, the budget, as uh, Alistair sort of alluded to, is very much a rollover budget. 
uh, with the exception of a small amount uh, added for this financial year and the next couple relating to uh, Jess Davidson and her appointment as a communications advisor in Alistair's team. Uh, we're using her um, on an equivalent of a couple of days a week to get the comms plan sorted out for district plan review and that will have an ongoing um, function over time as well. Uh, the significant uh, uh, change in budget reflects uh, that that's already in the LTP for the next year and the following year. That's around commissioner costs, which is not insubstantial, um, around half a dozen commissioners who need to hear the submissions on the district plan. Uh, there's also some uncertainty, as I've alluded to in the, in the narrative there, just around accommodation uh, costs. Uh, we will need to come back to you uh, this calendar year uh, with some further information on that. And then there's the costs around expert evidence to support submissions um, uh, and just the staff time as well. So it's not insurmountable, um, uh, but there was no need to make any changes to that budget that's already been approved. Uh, also just note in the narrative a couple of extra matters which are emerging into this uh, financial year, which relates to uh, uh, working on the regional policy statement. Um, we've been asked to contribute to that in a working team environment. Uh, also, for those of you on the Greater Christchurch Partnership, uh, there's the 2050 work which is proceeding and will continue to do so, and there will be some staff time needed on that. Uh, that's still emerging as well as to what the exact nature will be. And linked to the 2050 work is uh, also Greater Christchurch spatial planning. Uh, that's just starting to kick off as well, uh, and we're at the stages of starting to think, well, what might this look like? What does it need to do? How long will it take? Uh, and how many bodies will it need to involve uh, from, from council. At the moment we're slightly under-resourced in that space, but uh, through myself or Simon we'll certainly be able to report back in the course of this coming year around the needs for that. Uh, so that's really just a quick um, update on, on that budget and I'm happy to take any questions. Oh, so great. May the lights go out. You got the corporate credit card, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that's quite nice with it All right. Sorry, <laughs> with that excitement, was that uh, it was illuminating in more ways than one, Trevor. <laughs> oh, well done. Uh, you know. Yeah, we we um we weren't trying to hide any costs from you. <laughs> trying to keep you in yeah, the dark. Sure. <laughs> we'll keep you in the dark. <laughs> um, okay. Well, just a very quick overall comment. Um, the district plan reviews, as you know, are monumental undertakings um, and they've demanded a huge amount of your time in the last year um, uh, and before that. And the team's been going on this for to get to this point uh, where this year we can look forward to a notification. Um, from a budgetary point of view for the total project, we're about half spent, uh, but we are on budget uh, for what was set out to set your expectations and our, uh, our understanding uh, about three years ago, um, we're, we're tracking uh, very close to that. Uh, and I just wanted to acknowledge the team's uh, really concerted efforts. And I know that has been reflected in district plan and uh, regulation committee process, but um, it's extraordinarily difficult to, with these multi-year complex projects to keep it to get a team and keep them together and get to the end. Uh, and we are almost at the end of the beginning in terms of the, the notified draft. Uh, and, and there is a lot of process to go, but that uh, that becomes a little more out of, out of our control, but it also has a momentum that we have to roll with. Uh, the team are gonna be really challenged because at, at exactly the same time as you, the community, and them are working through trying to land this as a um, as a operative district plan over the next couple of years. Uh, then the whole planning framework at this point in time is is up in the air. And some of you might be thinking, "Oh, crikey, why are we doing all of this if the game is going to change completely?" Um, and it's a fair question that we've got from the community as well. Uh, can I have assurance that this is going to hold good? I've put a lot of effort myself into this. Um, and and we can't provide a lot of assurance about that, frankly. Um, um, but we do need to continue to land this review uh, 
uh, just as quickly and as appropriately as possible. Um, uh, it's not a criticism, but it's a commentary. The current operative plan was basically developed in the late 1990s. It is 20 years old, and it's been and an awful. We've learned an awful lot. You've experienced a lot of feedback from the community about the strengths and the weaknesses of the plan. Um, but it is time to have. Um, we don't know how it's all going to play out, but we do need to get a contemporary district plan in place. And the team have um, provided you, I believe, some really excellent advice to get us to that point. Thank you. Agreed. Well said, Simon. Um, questions? Councillor Thank you very much for that. I'm just really concerned about the workload that you've got coming up with, not just with our district plan, but you've got all this other stuff coming on board. How are you going to manage all that? And have you got the capacity and, and staff to be doing all that? I guess that's the purpose of just alluding to that in the, in the in the commentary for you. It's really at the beginnings of trying to understand what the workload in addition to the district plan will be. And I think we'll know more about that in the first part of this, this calendar year as we work through some of those uh, sub-regional and greater Christchurch matters. Um, I suspect, and I've certainly been quite vocal with Simon and others, that I think we will be under-resourced, though we do need to sit down and think about what our options are to best um, progress not only the district plan at a very very busy time but also those other processes as well we need to be in those other processes in the regional policy statement we need to be in the 2050 we need to be in the boots and all on the spatial planning uh, and um, we need to be there in a very much a collaborative proactive way rather than just reacting and responding um, so look uh, look we need just in a, in a short I, I, I think we are lightly staffed I think we will need more staff we just need to marry that up against how we progress with district plan and other processes in terms of any dips and dives uh, and humps and hollows a little bit more thinking to do on that and we'll certainly be back to you uh, in the due course on, on how to do that I, I think we can give you uh, at least a progress report when you go into deliberations yep. in May um, uh, we'll get a sense of where some of those other processes and requirements are progressed over the next quarter or so and um, and a sense of the workload around uh, arising from submissions we would hope by then or some sense of how that's tracking. Councillor Dirty. Yeah, um, my question was really that's I just don't want to see burnout by the staff. Look I Jim Palmer, if he was here, and, and Jeff anyway, and certainly if Jim Harland were here, I know they would be saying that we will be closely monitoring uh, workloads across a number of fronts, and you've dealt today with utilities and roading and all of the, um, the parallel universe they're, they're increasingly working in, having to do today's work, but, but knowing perhaps more acutely than anyone else in the organisation that, that their organisational uh, framework for who they're going to be working for um, in, in, uh, in the uh, medium term future is decidedly uncertain at this point in time. So um, as a management team we've had a, quite a lot of discussion now about the change dynamic that has, has uh, grown and been accelerated because of COVID um, in many respects and um, there is a very ambitious program of government reform that we referred to earlier. Um, that, all that said, sorry I'm going on and I don't mean to, but all that said we have adopted the budget disciplines that we set out to do in October, November last year uh, and, and all we can do from this point forward is closely look at how that tracks and keep you uh, well briefed as to where we get to and we've got a, we'll have a significant milestone uh, through the deliberations to alert you to really any significant changes that need to be made and, and by that time uh, Jim Harland will have um, at least some time with the organisation under, uh, under his build. Okay. Any further questions? Is there any general comments? Some you summed it up really well, and Wendy, your questions are really apt around resourcing, and we'll welcome um, 
there's the staff submission process as well so just keep us in, in the loop with how things are going because it is really important that we land it. Trevor, thank you for your leadership. Um, fantastic over the period. A lot of work over <laughs> these last number of years and we were talking about some of it yesterday um, and, and now about uh, how we land our district plan with our partners which is going to be really important to make sure that they see the same vision that we do. Um, so um, that'll be the next part of our process, which is it's all about relationships really when it comes to it and, and our community obviously. So we'll look forward to their feedback in due course, but thanks for getting us to this point. And Kirsten certainly um, as the district plan lead has done a really good job in keeping us on track in the last year. It's been a hard task because there's been so many meetings. So thanks um, to Kirsten for your lead there. All right. Thanks, team. So we've landed your budget to date. <laughs> um, <I don't laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Simon, you um, can uh, do your part now, which is economic development, if you like. And um, thanks, Drew. Do you want to deal with the um, report first, or do you uh, want to deal with just I'll deal probably, with probably um, refer both thanks, to Jim. the budget and the report, but just to guide you, the the H where page could you go to page 606 oh sorry 60 601 601 and then on page 606 you'll see the economic development budget and then um, this is a game in two halves back at 577 you'll see the district promotions budget 577 Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of just slightly pick up the number and the ordering. Uh, I thought I'd lost district promotions for a moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, uh, back to six oh six or the um, so you'll see that economic development is um, status quo budget in the. A stricter sense, um, it retains the principal cost. There is the um, uh, capacity grant to economic develop uh, to Enterprise North Canterbury uh, under economic development. Um, back on five seven seven, um, built into that budget for district promotions, you'll see there are the dollars there for the uh, capacity grants and the events. Uh, Xmas event funding for the promotions associations uh, and then the contract amount for ENC and that is reduced by $30,000 uh, in line with the directives um, for restraint last year. Uh, now my report now addresses um, that reduction because that's a reduction in an annual amount over the next 10 years and if we could go now to the report in the agenda uh, sorry guys yep, so that's page, uh, page um, four, section 4.8 page 284 to 291 and um, in that report uh, sorry I better go to it to talk to it so that's tab 10 yeah tab 10 um, so that um, relays to you the response from the board of Enterprise North Canterbury um, who as you can imagine weren't that happy with the idea of a sustained reduction over the 10 year period uh, and I've set out uh, and I, uh, I leave those comments for you to consider I've not tried to comment on the board's comments um, uh, and I've set out in the recommendations um, three options uh, you can either uh, leave the budget as it is, which is a net reduction of 30000 over the 10-year period, um, or you can restore it, um, or I've suggested a course which you could think of, a, of as the middle option, which is to fund the next two years out of a COVID loan and then restore the 30000 for the following eight years. And the thinking that I applied on that option was 
I don't think it now's the right to, look we get it from the budget restraint point of view but I have to say from our economic development agency's point of view now is not the right time to be cutting their budget um, and and to be fair to them um, they have in the current year reallocated on the fly an awful lot of what they ordinarily would have been doing to COVID response and I think you'll all agree they've really stepped up in that regard. So I thought it was not unreasonable to try and find the, the path of respecting the uh, desire for constraint because you've imposed that on a number of aspects of the organisation uh, and no one should be immune from that but at the same time um, uh, utilise the COVID funding capacity that you do have to achieve that in the next couple of years, but then to revert to the status quo. So. Thanks, Simon. Uh, you know, one's probably to Jeff, it might be just, I'm not sure, but what we already passed on the COVID, or not passed sitting there in the pro forma, do we, we would need to change that figure, would we not, if we were to take the recommendation, is it, you know, the body where you would take the two years because your loan is just reinstate it. Yeah, sixty thousand. Apologies. Um, uh, draw that down over the next sixty thousand and fund ENC the thirty thousand a year for the next two years, but and then revert this budget to an additional thirty thousand uh, funded in the normal way. Uh, from the third year on, oh, I've got no problem with that. that yeah, that's yeah. fine. I'm talking about what's sitting in the pro forma with the with oh. the fund. Um, it's only got seven hundred thousand out of it, and we're looking at reducing that back. Go there just for a re uh, recommendation. That's, that's what I'm saying. So it does, it does need a recommendation, a recommendation to that's right. do to change what we did before. That's but right. it's sitting there in a pro forma. Could we not just change uh, the number on the pro forma? When you adopt, when you adopt yeah. this budget here, you would just all you do is take thirty thousand for the next two years from the COVID fund, uh, and restore the thirty thousand from year three. So, or, or, yeah. or just as a recommendation. Or, or I think you could just recommendation move. F is perhaps a bit cryptic, but or, that's what the was the intent. Or, or you could just move A. Don't move B. C becomes um, uh, B and then E becomes C and then leave F and then it just becomes a, effectively, it just puts it back in as it was, rather than touching the economic, that's the other way of handling it, then it just becomes a regular amount as it was before. And it says it's inflation adjusted. Well anyway, that, that'll be up to the movers and yeah. seconders. So Kirsten, you're probably going to be there. Um, just looking at 4.4, um, can you show me the line where the new visitor strategy implementation is in the budget? So if we don't have a separate bu budget line item for visitor strategy implementation, um, uh, and, and a number of those recommendations are for Enterprise North Canada to reflect in the district promotions plan. So when you get the district promotions plan, sorry, for the year, that's the time when you'll see the budget implications of ENC's efforts to implement the, the visitor strategy. On the other side of it, within our organisation, there are some recommendations out of that for us. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we are seeking to fund that from within our existing resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so we haven't asked you for any additional funding at this point in time um, for that. Okay. Just to, uh, to Councillor Dudies, followed um, by Councillor Stewart. Thank you. Um, I'm just uh, perhaps throwing a bit of caution to the wind. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned about taking this money from the COVID response thing just for one year at the moment. We just don't know what's what's in front of us and I'm just feeling a little bit nervous about um, taking that money from that, that thing just to, just to top up for it's the second question, yeah. So that's just my question on that one. Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll answer your question with my view, which is um, I think the benefit 
for Enterprise North Canterbury, the, the thing that they were struggling with is as soon as you start tempering with, no, wrong, t wrong turn of phrase, but as soon as you start messing with their budget, you start messing with fractions of people and allocations. And and um, I think by restoring the 30,000, and I personally believe it's a legitimate thing to do out of COVID, you're maintaining their capacity to respond to COVID and the economic impacts. So I think that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable alignment. Uh, thank you. Councillor Stewart. Right, Councillor Stewart. Thank you. Um, I had a look back at um, e ENC's uh, June uh, 30th, 2020 accounts, and in there they have 400,000 on short term investment, uh, further 325,000 in cash. Um, plus, uh, the last year's grant, they're holding $86,000 in, in reserve, so they didn't spend all of the um, grant we gave them last year. Um, I've noted this now to take to the next time they come back, but can anyone ask, answer why they didn't spend all the grant they got last year? Um, Simon. Either Simon or yourself as a trustee. So I haven't got a detailed breakdown in front of me of that, of that underspend, but an element of it that I'm, a, I'm aware of is that um, events last year were obviously hugely uh, suppressed and so there's the, mm? only good yeah but 86. yeah well that's an element of it yeah. um, so there is an element of carry forward of the events fund um, that is and and that has built up um, as well and one of the one of the dilemmas about events on a contestable basis is you want them readily available and, and we give large numbers of, of organisations relatively small amounts, but not all of them over time get spent and some of them get allocated and you're looking and they're telling you that, sorry, the, giving you too much of detail perhaps, but, but giving, saying we'll do it and then they don't do it this year and then they do it the next year and they hold the money. So the reality is that ENC at any one time has quite a bit of event funding. Um, I'll call it there available unspent and then of course no one was doing events particularly last year for a period so there's quite a bit um, the other underspends on uh, elements I'm not familiar enough right here and now with the accounts but that's something for you to ask Enterprise North Canterbury I think yeah. um, when they uh, furnish their um, uh, accountability documents. If, if Jim was here he'd be able to give a bit more of a fuller answer He's also an on the uh, well, comes as an advisory trustee there. But Enterprise North Canterbury have also invested in um, Made in North Made in North Canterbury. They provided support and accounting advice to a number of organisations which they took out of reserves. Same with Made in North Canterbury. Wow was another one that they took from reserves without with this council's blessing. So. Um, it might show that, Sandra, but actually, in actual fact, the cash positions, I've been a bit nervous about that as we've been going forward and asked those questions because there's been a range of initiatives to support our community and our business community particularly in a difficult time. Uh, and those reserves have certainly not been what they may have been presented at that time, but they'll be able to provide further clarity on that. But as a trustee, I'm, a, I'm aware of just those particular measures that have been considered by the board. Thank you. I just wondered whether um, Mr. Millwood wanted to comment on on the fact that there is uh, they're carrying so much in uh, short term in investment. I mean, how would you regard this organisation to be able to stand a uh, thirty thousand a permanent thirty thousand reduction in the grant that the council um, provides to it? Uh, from looking at their accounts, they, they're definitely cash rich. Both their, their current liabilities are way out, low, uh, uh, out way their current liabilities. So they've got, in my estimation, about 350 outstanding in the bank. They definitely have $86,000 from the council, which they didn't spend last year. Um, they haven't spent it. We should be asking them what haven't they spent it on. 
uh, there are tax we need to take. Uh, the reason they put the A6000 aside is generally because they've got liabilities which they can justify. Uh, we just have to get uh, an understanding of what those liabilities are that they haven't actually spent the money on. So they're in a good position, um, but it's it's I suppose what we're talking about here is I don't know thirty thousand dollars. It's never here or there. It's about uh, what what's our overall uh, strategy and support of an organisation that provides economic development in the district. And I think what I'm hearing at the moment is we need to sustain that sort of um, investment to make sure that it's. Uh, that it's a viable business and it's, um, it's meeting those measures that we put in the statement of intent. Uh, but certainly when the statement of intent comes through, I think we should challenge that mm -hmm. and ask, you know, why wasn't the A6000 spent and what was it supposed to be spent on? Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Kurt, did you have a question, Councillor Ward? Okay. Uh, we'll just, can we just wait a second? I'll just check if there's any other questions. Councillor Williams? My question is, should we not then wait until they need this money before we may um, bring it up and organise it for them? Because at this stage, obviously, they don't need it. And um, so should we, just, should we just put this amount on hold for another year or two years until they actually come up and actually need it and show us what they can spend it on? Okay. Um couple of comments. I'm, I'm not fully informed to comment on ENC's needs. Um, I would say as a, um, as a not-for-profit organisation who's got a major contract about to end on the 30th of June, which is a contract with the council, and the council needs to decide whether it wants to renew its district promotions contract, if I were on their board I'd be concerned about my cash reserves because if I've got to then if that contract isn't renewed, then I've got redundancies uh, as a board to consider. So at this point in time, uh, until that contract is renewed and they've got no certainty at this point, at this point, um, then um, I would be uh, concerned about my reserves. Now I'm on another board at this point in t at time with exactly the same issue. So that's the response that we're taking uh, in relation to that question. Thank that, you. that has nothing to do with my question. Well, I don't see it. Well, thank you. I think it was answered, Councillor Williams. Well, it's my decision whether it was answered or not, and I deem it was. So um, if you have a supplementary question, you're welcome to answer it. Well, I think it, I think it was addressed. Um, Simon, just wanted to ask you, just on, under expenditure with the page 577, it's got the grants to um, uh, events for the Christmas events, I think they are, um, under expenditure. Could, between now and um, our, our consideration, I was wondering if you could ask Vanessa or and Simon if they could check with the event organisers whether those grants are adequate. Because my understanding is, particularly in Oxford, um, the cost of the um, um, traffic traffic management is such that it's making that it, it fairly marginal. So I just want to check that those sums are correct. If you wouldn't mind the team to look into that, that would be appreciated. Thank you. All right. So I've any further questions, Councillor Redmond? You'll contest the meeting with a recommendation. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> I'd like to move recommendation A. C and E. <coughs> A, A, C, C and E. Okay. Which can be re lettered if you wish, but in terms of the yep. recommendation. Someone prepare to second. Um, might let Councillor Ward, given she's the portfolio holder, if that's okay. All right, Councillor Redmond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think we've asked ENC, can they trim their budget, their activities by $30,000 and they've come back and said, well, what would you like us to leave out, um, which is a legitimate response. I think in the current climate, uh, COVID and unknown as we move into the future, ENC 
other people with their business development that we actually want to be supporting. And um, I've found them very useful. Over the past year, if I have inquiries, I quite often refer people to ENC for advice and assistance. And I've been quite impressed with the role they took on over COVID. And I think we're sending the wrong message if we try and reduce their budget. They may have cash reserves. I don't know the purpose of those, but that's something we can ask them about when they come along to see us in the next month or two. So I'm very much supportive of the work they're doing and I think we should encourage them. The response and comments, I could sense a feeling of disappointment um, when I read their board comments. Um, and I, I think we should be encouraging them, not discouraging them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ward, do you wish to speak? Thank you. Um, I'm very much in favour of keeping um, and not reducing by 30,000. I would have preferred probably to um, get that extra money in this instance from the COVID recovery loan for the next two years and reverting to ordinary funding um, after that. I think it's really important that we that we we keep them at you know at their rate um, because I happen to know that the monies that we give them pays their basic salaries for their for their people so that they can perform. If we cut back thirty thousand a year, then they would be looking at reducing their staff ratios and, and, and someone would be without a part time job. And I think we would be we would be giving them doing them a really huge disservice. Um, and knocking them back. We don't, we can't underestimate how much value they add to economic development and the promotion of our region by, you know, I know that Heather spends all her time going out and raising independent funds. You know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year they raise independently, which we couldn't do through the council. And they work very, very hard and we need them more than ever coming out of COVID. We need them as we recover from um, COVID and we really, really need all of their expertise. And um, th they're very frugal. And the fact that they've got money put aside, they, go, they need that as a backup because you don't know what's around the corner. They may need it for wheels over white pro or wow. Well, somewhere along the line they're going to use it um, to the benefit of our district and I really think that um, it gets my support to to keep to keep that 30,000 per annum there but um, whether we do it in E or F um, I, I think possibly um, that's for us to decide but we certainly need to do that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Varna, did you wish to speak? Oh you indicated you were willing no, I come to Councillor Atkinson first. It's fine. Uh, Councillor Atkinson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, look, I am supportive of this. Um, I, the, um, if there were not cash reserves held by this organisation, we'd be sitting there saying, are these people viable for the next couple of years? Should we invest in, um, in someone that's running a business that doesn't have cash reserves and backstops? Because we, would, we wouldn't be. We would be saying this organisation isn't running. The organisation isn't running properly. Yes, you could argue that now is the time to spend cash reserves. You could, of course, you could argue that. And I think it's a bit rich to think that um, a carryover of eighty-six thousand for stuff, some stuff that's actually going to be committed already and will be, and 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 the balance of that as a carryover when a council of ours. Um, Need I remind people of the carryover figure that we have and the explanations that we have around that carryover over figure? I think that uh, just Simon's very basic um, explanation of the carryover puts it in perspective and uh, it'd be pretty rich of this council to, uh, to knock it back on, on, those, uh, on the basis of a, of a carryover that's, that's going to be needed in the future because believe me, once level one does go, and it may not be this year, um, there will be events. Have a look at the events that are out there now and how well they're attended because there hasn't been any. And there will be more and more people looking for money in which to run those events. Uh, 
uh, speaking where I've got um, myself, Councillor Stewart, then Williams. So um, I, I'm fully in support of this. Uh, it, it's if we took, and it was a very brave discussion at the board that was led by. Um, was taken there and asked and you've seen the results that came back in terms of the commentary there and what impact that would have. This is a very time as Councillor Atkinson rightly observes and prior to that council award um, being mentioned by uh, 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 Councillor Redmond as well. That this is a really important time. Um, there's a number of events they're looking to establish here. $30,000 per annum actually can make a great deal of difference. If we take $30,000 away, it will have a direct consequences of event funding not being available uh, to particularly new events that are coming here. I just, you know, I'm aware that uh, we're just not far away from getting the Motor Caravan Association over the line in, in Kaiapoi, which is, yes, I wasn't sure whether you'd had it or not, um, but also last week Motor Caravan is another um, entity within the Motor Caravan Association are looking at doing a national event uh, in Kaiapoi. Um, so they're the particular, and they're bringing you know, hundreds of people here um, and the potential of attracting more. The, the two events at the last weekend, Muscle Car Madness and the new wheels, uh, wings and wheels or whatever they called it in Oxford, fantastic event uh, that's got so much potential. Um, there's, there's lots of events that are being thought of. So that's, they're, they're the sort of groups that may be, be deprived or new opportunities that may be provide, deprived when our new stadium is, is available. And there are lots of things being thought of that could go within the indoor complex that just, just haven't been thought of before. I think it's very prudent um, position of the board to have a cash reserve. They, they will need, when Heather and um, the chair come here, they can explain that uh, and how that's made up to all of you at that point. This organisation has been reviewed ad nauseum by this council. Um, they deliver, they really do deliver. And through the, um, the time of, the, uh, of COVID in particular, they set us, immediately got set up to support uh, our businesses here and providing them with key financial advice, which to be honest, saved a number of entities. A number of people that contacted me and I was able to refer them to ENC and they got some positive advice because people were really desperate, as we know through that time, didn't know whether they were going to have a business uh, on the other side of COVID. And we are in a really risky situation. I don't want to see us take personally take money out of the COVID um, budget at this point. I think Councillor Redmond's absolutely right. Um, it should be properly funded and, and, re and returned to the level it was before. So look, I just urge you all to support it. ENC will come here and report as they always do. Um, and we can ask them the questions and be satisfied one way or the other uh, on those. But that, that's, this is an organisation that we do need. It's really important that we fund them properly and their delivery for our district and getting events here and all the other business support that they provide. Okay, so uh, Councillor Stewart followed by Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I won't support um, the granting of uh, the 30,000. I think it is very timely, as we've asked every other department within this organisation to um, uh, thoroughly review its budget um, in this um, COVID environment, and we have had that, and we're looking at uh, what is probably going to be one of the lowest, if not the lowest, rate increases of a council within New Zealand. Um, this organisation is extremely cash rich, uh, 400,000 on short term investment which is earning interest on. The money is accrued from our grant money, I would say with quite a, a lot of certainty because in fact the project money that ENC is able to get by going out and um, asking for um, funding for a service that delivers to the community is totally specific to that project. It wouldn't be able to um, uh, bank, bank that and, and get um, short-term interest. Plus it's got a further $325,000 in cash and other investments 
in addition to the $86,000 of unspent grant um, uh, from last year. I don't dispute that economic development uh, and promotion of the district is, um, is a valid function uh, for, the, for this council. Um, it's absolutely a no-brainer. But what I do dispute is, in fact, we have a CCO that, um, that undertakes that function. And as a CCO, it has extra costs. It pays an external accountant to do its books. It brings in um, a, uh, an administrator, an external administration, uh, which it pays. And our other CCO, which is Two Hightower Trust, gets that service um, from this council. So as I said, I, um, I think it's uh, timely and indeed we need to ask um, questions of, of uh, ENC when they next appear. And I consider myself remiss in not identifying that um, it's an extremely um, rich position uh, when in fact we, we need to uh, should have look, asked them questions earlier and we should have reviewed whether in fact that grant money is being well spent. As I said, don't confuse that with the function they carry out. I am thoroughly in support of that function. It's just the entity that we use to um, get that function done in our community I do have um, difficulties with and always have been. And as I said in this instance, we are asking every other section of this council to take a cut and review its budgets. That's been done here and of course, are we surprised? No, we can't. In fact, look hard at those accounts and they have got money in there that they should actually dip into at this point. So no, I won't support that in fact we um, let the status quo go past and I think as a council we are remiss if we don't ask them to um, take a small cut. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Councillor Stewart. Question, did you say? Well, my question is, uh, is probably to you as a trustee, really. Um, is it not Audit New Zealand? I'm just, the information there, I just want to make sure it's not misleading. Is the, the audit that's done is done by Audit New Zealand and is required by a statement of intent. Is that not is, is, is that not the case? That is a requirement? It's not a, something they do as an extra expense? That's, that's a requirement through our SOI, is it not? That's my understanding. Thank you. Yeah, it's a requirement of local government act that the CCO is audited. Yep. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, okay, um, thank you. Councillor Williams? Yeah. Um, well, so originally I wasn't a great supporter of Enterprise North Canterbury. Lately, I think they have been doing a real good, wonderful job. However, it's a want money, not a need money. And at the moment, there's other organisations and other council projects that are probably more in need of money. And that's why I'd like to see and wait until they actually need the money for a project because they are cash rich, they're richer than this council to a degree. They've got money in the bank, no overdraft. We've got borrowed money. So I don't think we'd do justice to the ratepayers by giving excess money away at this stage until they actually need it for our project to show us that they need it. And then I would support them full heartedly. But at this stage, I haven't been shown one iota that they've got any need for this money at the moment. I've asked the question, does nobody come up in this room here that they need it? All they do is want it to accumulate on top of the existing funds they've got. So I, I would 100% I would support it if I was shown the facts that they need the money, because I think they're doing a real order, good job. Order, order please. Councillor Williams yeah. entitled to speak. So, as I say, if I could be shown that they need the money, I would 100 percent, percent, uh, you know, push for it. But at this stage, I have not seen that, and I think the ratepayers deserve, particularly in these times, for us to hold back and be more frivolously with their money than what we have been doing for this particular one. Just, just to clarify, cash rich, cash rich. <laughs> Uh, 400,000, if you look at it in terms of their turnover, 
which I think is around about $2 million now. Uh, 400000 would fund 25% of the year, so it would only fund three months um, of the year. So um, it really does rely on the council funding uh, the activity. And I, I'd sort of reiterate again, it, it goes back to the statement of intent that the council actually um, adopts each year with ENC and it agrees on those levels of performance. Uh, and that's what we're really sort of talking about at the moment is, is what is that level of performance that you want to actually uh, ENC to perform next year. Uh, and I think once again that 30,000 is, is uh, sort of the provision for the events funding to sort of spur things along. So cash rich has a lot of meanings, but when you look at it in terms of the turnover, uh, doing the statement of intent that we're requiring them to do it, it's only going to fund the next three months. As reply to that on my question, or my statement there, as I was stating, if they come up to me and prove that they need that money for link, it's a different kettle of fish. Okay. Major point. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Barton. Followed by Count, do you wish to speak, Councillor Dewey? Yes, I do. After, after um, I just want to remind everyone what we're here for today because we're not here to get a report from ENC. We're here to do a draft budget and it's only a draft so this is what we think is our best bet going forward to put out the consultation to the community. So we have to make a call here today whether we think this amount is the right amount that we should be putting out to the community. We're not here to debate ENC's budget. We're not here to say whether they've got money or not. We're not here to say whether they're cash rich or cash poor. ENC is a not for, basically not for profit. They aim to make zero dollars, but they do have money in the bank because otherwise they couldn't operate. What we're taking here from them, if I look at the budget line, isn't necessarily from the events funding. It actually could well be from someone's job. So you're actually reducing someone's hours, um, which it's not, not our call, it's their call because they take this money and they spend it how they see fit. Um, but the actual events funding line looks like it's there's a 50,000 for that. The 30,000 may well be in that, but I'm not here to look at that detail today. All I'm looking at today is what money we should put in our draft met budget that's prudent. I don't think reducing um, the district promotion budget, I don't care who runs it, today is a good idea. So I'm happy to leave it with the existing budget provision that we've got going forward, and I'll tell you why. When you run a business and economic activity is going down and it's under threat, it's the time you actually spend more on promotion. You spend more on advertising. It's not when things are going swimmingly. You don't have to advertise. But when things are under threat and the economic activity is under threat, you need to promote more. And with the district tourism, that we, the, the uh, <coughs> national tourism coming up is a big thing at the moment, we need to grab our share of the pie. And that was quite clear through the visitor strategy, which you've all received a copy of. So now is not the time to cut promotion budget. Um, the COVID thing, I think that's window dressing. I don't actually think it's ne we can necessarily attribute 30,000 to COVID. I think actually they did divert a lot of their <laughs> event resource into business support during the COVID period. So the people who would have been working on promoting us actually were diverted into looking after the businesses. So in that way, you could easily say it was probably more than $30,000 that was taken away from promotion and put into business support during that time. So I understand the COVID argument. But I think that's window dressing. We're looking at a budget going forward. So this is, uh, do we want a promotion budget going forward? Um, I want to listen to the submissions, uh, but I want to put it out there at a rate that we think is appropriate. Our district promotion budget is really low for a district of our size. It's, it's terribly low. Other districts have much higher promotion and economic development budgets, but we rely on ENC to use this money to leverage lots of other money from other places. Um, and every year we debate this budget, um, which is, it's always going to be debated as, is it a nice to have? But to me, it brings money into the district. And it was a point Councillor Atkinson made when I debated the park and ride, but I'd forgotten. Um, when you have a, a, a facility or an event, it brings people into the district. Those people spend money, they spend money in businesses, they spend money at activities, and they bring people and activity into our district. They actually provide economic activity. And if we reduce our promotions budget, we are at a risk of actually reducing our economic activity. So 
So I'm 100% um, supportive of keeping it at the status quo. If anything, we should be increasing it, but we can't quite afford that. So keeping it at the status quo, I think, is the sensible thing to do. And we can review ENC's budget when they come and present it to us. We've got that information in front of us. Thanks, Councillor Barnett. Uh, Councillor Dean. Thanks very much. I just um, was reflecting back, and um, you know, Enterprise North Canterbury have always run the business awards, and I think that this last year they were supposed to have been run, and which they cancelled. So um, that's quite a sizable amount of money that they would have normally spent on our businesses. So I um, I don't have any problem with um, supporting their their um, promotional things at all. Councillor Bryan, followed by Councillor, you, you indicating as well? Yeah, Bates. just my two, very brief two cents worth. Councillor Bailey is quite right. This is a draft consultation, and we'll wait and see what the people have to, to say. And I did notice that you know, it's 3.30 per person, we're only paying 4.16 per person. Um, but anyway, we'll hear back from our per persons. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Councillor Meadows? This is a solvent organization doing good work that we need them to do in a time when we need them to do it, and I'm perfectly um, happy with giving them the money to do so. Any other speakers? Councillor Redmond, do you wish to sounds a rather reply? Uh, just briefly, Mr. Mayor, I may be standing in the way of an exit. <laughs> No, because I'm no, trying to get through some other things if we can. There's more business. Well, I agree with your comments that this is an organisation that does deliver economic development and promotion for the district. Um, I think the question of reserves and their solvent status is a red herring. It's really nothing to do with what we're discussing today. Um, I also note that in the, uh, the board comments they made reference to the fact they didn't have a CPI increase um, which cost them $14,000 um, so they've already exercised some restraint and I'm reminded of a bank manager um, who asked for the umbrella back when it rains so <laughs> I'm not going to be the bank manager asking for the umbrella so I, I support the $30,000 increase. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to put the recommendation. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary. Declare. Do you wish your vote reported? So I declare that carry. So it was Councillor Williams and Stuart. Okay. So um, thank you, Simon. I think that's. I think that's I all think your that, budget. I think that's that's it, Mr. Mayor. Just one very quick comment. Just to note that there is some change in. Reporting lines take effect from Monday next week, uh, from my point of view. So Jeff Millwood becomes um, takes takes uh, oversight with Marie of Customer Services. Liz Smith takes uh, communications and engagement, uh, and uh, in due course, when Tracy Tierney is on board, she'll take on development planning unit. According Just to this this year, she's coming tomorrow. So I said that to Jim. <laughs> I said that to Jim earlier. I won't tell you what he said back to me. But um, um, Tracy won't be fronting tomorrow. But um, thanks, Simon, for uh, your uh, work in those particular portfolio areas. You'll you'll be con of course we we know you're continuing, but we appreciate the lead that you've been playing in that space. So thank you, Councillor Wall. Um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Simon and um, all the best when you go to Wellington um, to local <laughs> government and you give them heaps. You let them know how we're feeling and how what we're doing and don't let them away with anything, please. <laughs> there you are. You've got, you've got a big um, broad remit there, Simon. See what you bring back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so we're going to continue um, because... Uh, we, we are scheduled to finish at six, but it would be quite nice to conclude some others of areas if we can. So, Jeff, if we could, if you're ready, could we do finance and aim, which is 607 to 613? Page 607 to 613. I'll just see whether um, Paul Christensen comes across. So. Okay. Um, perhaps we do, do the you Canary, want to wait till, do Canary, Canary Museum. Museum first. 614. Um, Any message zero as well? So yes, I have, yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, 
the Kettering Museum. It's basically the, the, um, the commentary has been read. Uh, there's a recommendation there which uh, is separate to the others which request the council to, to agree to that. Uh, Page 614, guys. Yeah, the consultation period, uh, so they'll need to request us to approve that. And in like other years, they've also uh, requested a date to come and present to the council their uh, the Canterbury Museum plan. Uh, to date, um, I'm still not sure whether they've got the dedicated funding from the government to fund that portion. Uh, so pretty much in status quo for the years, I know that they're uh, lodging resource consents and trying to push that side of it along, uh, utilising the Canterbury funds themselves uh, that they've got on hand. Uh, but basically there's a, an intention or uh, I suppose it's more like a promise actually to try and keep the project to the 195.2 million and that's what they've presented in the current draft plan and that's been circulated to council. Uh, so basically um, yeah, any questions? Any, any questions that you Councillor Atkinson? Just noticed on the Victor, uh, on the um, what do you call it, medium average rate that we've gone from thirty dollars a year, uh, thirty one dollars a year to thirty dollars a year right through the years. Is there a reason we've dropped to a dollar per rate payer? I mean that's on the mythical average, but is there any reason, given in the light of what's happening, a reduction of a dollar a year just won't make a material difference, but it will do <laughs> overall. That's probably uh, something I've done when I've uh, put the. Uh, rates across. No, there's, we could keep that rate uh, exactly the same, it's just that we're not passing that fund uh, across the, the development levy we're holding. Uh, so we're just building a fund for when that uh, happens. Um, when it happens we'll, we'll pass it across in th uh, three, over three years, uh, which is supposed to start in 22-23. Uh, so, um, You could put that back up to a dollar if you like, it's, it makes a difference. Well, in light of things, I mean, it's a question for the table, not for me. I would suggest that, you know, it makes a marginal difference, but it's still another dollar per year that people don't have to find, that's all. Mm. Yeah. Councillor um, Jeff, I think there was a question over the museum board's ability to levy a, a capital. Uh, component, and yes. I seem to think that may have been the subject of a legal opinion or something. Did anything come from that? No, I couldn't find the legal opinion on it. Uh, in terms of the capital levy, it all referred to the basis of charging uh, an operating levy, and I went to the museum themselves to see if they had a legal opinion on that, which they didn't, uh, and. Um, Nigel, who's their CFO, referred back to the operating levy. Basically, um, they could raise a loan and charge a, an operating levy, which funds the operations of that loan. And so that's the um, H22 that you have effectively. Um, uh, I, I think if it got challenged, legal opinion would be that we would be funding the operations of the of the museum, but uh, it's, a, it's a it's a point. Uh, and if the council were of the uh, opinion they wanted to challenge that, then we could get that legal opinion. Council uh, going on from that, would they have the ability to raise that type of money uh, as an operating expense? Uh, I believe they would be able to. Um, they would effectively um, be referring their security to our rates and levies. And um, I, I suggest if they went out there for a, a credit rating, they'd get quite a, a good rating. And the other question is, I noticed they've got 24, 25, 10% increase. 10% 20 next year, 10% the next year. That's correct. Massive, massive increases. So mm. 
should we be going back to them and try to rein them in and say, look, uh, our projected um, take is not on the equal footing as what they are, they are doing. Um, very hard to justify a 10% increase year after year after year. Yeah, uh, I've signalled that for probably about the last, at least if I remember about the last, must be nearly 10 years now. Uh, and the basis of that is the investment of 195 million. They'll have a much substantial, more substantial building, larger area, probably larger staff. And um, so that's what's making up that, those huge, huge increases. Um, their intention is to rate for the, uh, or levy us for the additional depreciation, which they are trying to progressively fund over a period of time to get it to the, um, the true operating costs. So that in future years, uh, they wouldn't be coming back to the council to fund their capital uh, works. They would be accumulating fund themselves. So should we put a sort of a submission out to our rate pass and ask them if that is what our rate pass want to fund? Um, I'd like to see a result on something like that. Uh, that's that's the decision of the council. If, um, I think we we generally put that in the um, the annual plan. We don't really bring specific notice to it. Uh, we have in the past, and we've had a few that have um, submitted against it, but generally um, taken silence as agreement that they are acceptable to it. Okay. Any other questions? The status quo position is what's here. So I hear what Councillor Williams has stated, but I, I, I don't personally wish to go through a, an exercise right at the moment on it. it it's we, we're required by law. Um, we're involved in conversation. Just we're involved in conversation with other mayors and other councils around putting um, putting them under scrutiny around the 195 million. They're going through a resource consent exercise at the moment because they have to, uh, or they need to, in which to acquire funding from outside sources. And they've got a mammoth task to get the Crown on board. So we, we don't know any more at this point, but it's prudent for us to be putting aside because we know some stage we'll get called upon um, uh, in which to, to make the contribution, which we're required to by an act of Parliament. And there's no desire to change that um, from, from any side of politics at this particular point in time so uh, from what we've been advised so I think it's prudent that we carry on the course that we are I, look I don't like it we, we've all been through this exercise I don't like it any more than the rest of us do but it's it's just it's fruitless wasting a lot of effort on it so what's the requirement of us um, passing this in their budgets what happens if we voted against this in their budget what's the well, what's then, the predicament where would that put us? There's a, there's a process that you have to go through and generally um, we, could, we could object to the levy um, and when we object, usually when we've objected to the levy the, uh, the Canterbury Museum have called a, uh, a special meeting to hear the objection. Um, basically you would need to get a majority of all the other contributing authorities, in other words, um, you know, to set the rate the same as what it was in the current year. Uh, but basically, you would need um, Hiranui, Selwyn, and ourselves to object to achieve that, or Christchurch City and ourselves. Uh, basically, uh, Christchurch City have required the museum to try and keep the increase this year, I think it was 2 or 3%, which they've achieved. Uh, and so uh, they would be happy with that, because the museum have met that um, that goal, they are the major contributor, and so we're done. We're done. Be unlikely to have a successful result. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so we're now at six oh seven. So we've got page six oh seven. It's the finance and aim budget. So that's Jeff and Paul. Are you happy to stay here, Jeff? Yeah. No, because we've already moved it pro forma. Yes, yeah, so 
unless there's an amendment, it stays. Um, and I was test looking around, and everyone seemed happy. So, well, well, you know, understanding of where we're at, uh, accepting. Uh, Paul, thank you. Thank you. Um, the finance aim budget um, has been prepared very much on a business as usual basis. Um, we've made no changes to FTEs or significant changes to um, service levels. Um, as such, it's, um, uh, there's no um, significant changes in uh, spending or, or rating or funding impact. Okay, yep. thank you. Thanks, Paul. Any questions of Paul? No, it doesn't appear so. So, oh, hold on, sorry. Councillor Ward. The question is, don't you think you've done well? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I, I actually think that's probably something we can comment on collectively and say thanks to Jeff and Paul and the amazing finance team we have, you know, all the work that goes in is immense, so thank you. So Councillor Ward, you may wish to, you can join in that remark if you wish, but I don't, um, Paul, you've done a fantastic job, really here. I, I know, and um, well, Dan, you know, I've been on the long-term plan, but, but you know, we, we do understand the pressures that we put on the finance, but Jeff and Paul and the team, and, and I've seen the stress in your face in December, and I hope that you're feeling a bit better now, but, um, I think you've all done an amazing job in keeping things done to, um, to, 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 to our wishes. Well done, and we really, really appreciate you. Um, thank you. I'll pass that on to my team, who now are now very, very experienced team, and um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, fortunate to be able to rely on them to do really good work. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I remember when the uh, local government. New Zealand uh, ratings come out and uh, had the finance result be a pause. Um, uh, I think you gave the team a shout, and uh, I don't think we, go we couldn't get him off the ceiling for quite a while. Yeah. Well, that was, and, and we're all so, so proud of that, you know, that rating. Whenever we go to local government forums, we're all told about it, and standard and pause as well. It's just something that we are very proud of, so thank you for all the work that you and your team do to get to keep us at that point and make sure that we're well advised financially so thank you all right <laughs> that's it thank you all right so um we come jeff we might do the water unit now and then we'll come to governance so that's 6 30 to 6 35. we're a bit ahead sarah so <laughs> Now I've said that, damn it. <laughs> uh, yes, the water, the water unit is much like the uh, project delivery unit, the PDU. It's an internal service delivery unit uh, and it uh, has a reticulation and treatment teams that work on behalf of our cost centre controller. We um, have a service level agreement between uh, Jared's team and my team uh, to deliver the service. Um, you can see at the moment we're out for a water uh, unit manager and that's uh, this time it's been done through Brennigan's. Um, so yeah basically um, most of its turnover there is it's, it works out around about 70% um, is operational work just responding to service requests, breaks, uh, making sure the treatment stations are all um, topped up. And we've had some uh, fun and games with View Hill uh, over the last few weeks trying to find leaks um, but basically uh, now with 30 percent is capital works which uh, we tend to keep around or under 250,000 the rest of it is actually tendered out um, so yeah happy to take any questions um, I think the major uh, bit of piece of work this year is uh, getting a, an additional port of com there health and safety we want to the purpose of that is uh, we want to uh, uh, do more training uh, keep the competency rates up uh, particularly if the unit is absorbed into a new entity to make sure that staff is uh, in the best possible position to actually at least retain its 
um, the type of work they're doing or uh, have an opportunity of promoting themselves in a new organisation. Uh, in the next year, we're looking at taking on two um, apprentices at the start of the year and two apprentices at the end of the year. Uh, and that room would be used as a training room for those apprentices. And um, uh, the average age of the water unit staff is starting to get on, and so we, through attrition. <laughs> so as two come on, two will probably go off. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of keeping that team uh, fully um, um, in your own capacity to do the work. Uh, it's, it's an interesting, it's been interesting actually uh, managing over the top of the team over the years. It's difficult to find the skill set uh, in the private market. Um, and so you, you tend to um, attract people from other centres to come and work for us. And they, they do tend to come from the smaller organisation, you know, smaller councils and then uh, work themselves into the teams, which in lots of ways is to the detriment of those other small councils because um, they find it difficult to attract staff too. Um, I can talk about this all, all day. Um, it's the same with our rating staff. Our rating staff are difficult. They're, they're another uh, sort of a difficult resource to find. Uh, but basically, yeah, happy to take more questions. Thanks, Jim. Any questions? I have Councillor Atkinson. Uh, Williams, duty. Jeff, just, just a question around, you've, you've got noted in here in, in your highlights, the, the vehicle changes, are they um, because of growth and need and are extra vehicles and if they're not, why are they actually highlighted not as a business as usual changeover or rollover if you like, or are they a lot more expensive than we, we have budgeted for, why are they a highlight in here when I would have thought that it's an operational cost that would already be in your budgets. And yeah. just before I finish, look, congratulations, it's very exciting to think that councils are looking at apprentices. I think that is absolutely fantastic. It is back to the old days, I know, but it is absolutely yeah. fantastic that you're doing that. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, no, no reason why they're highlighted. They are replacement vehicles, but um, we, we're looking at trying to get something that's a bit more um, multi-skilled uh, to, to do the work and that's carrying the equipment as well as um, you know being used for other tasks as well so we're trying to look at the look at that um, we tend to um, quite often we do tend to buy second hand in this in this area we don't buy a brand new yeah because uh, of the, the some of the value of the, the vehicles are quite high so um, but we, we look at the market and see which is the best uh, uh, buy and we double check that with um, the best car which is uh, has the overseas our purchases. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williams? Yeah, it's not a big amount but traffic management equipment, you know, $6,000 every year. I would imagine once you buy cones and some traffic um, signs and bits and pieces, they last quite a long period of time. So, what was why it kind of valuing them for? You know, cones only get pinched every now and then. Um, yeah, regular. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think it is wear and tear. It's a wear and tear cost. Um, not, it's not cheap for the health and safety equipment. And um, I'll, but I'll double check on that. Now this is traffic management equipment. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the cones and everything. That's there. Yeah. I know. I know. I, I went and flogged some cones when we had COVID and forgot to return them back and got told off for that, but I think it is wear and tear. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, Councillor Duty, did you have a question? Oh, okay, <laughs> just checking. Councillor Bicky? <laughs> um, halfway down the page, 634, um, stock taking, why has that gone up to about 30% in one jump? Was it too low before, and then it stays at that level forever? Is that was it too low before? Um, I'm trying to think of a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to double check. But I, um, over COVID, what we are finding, uh, that's actually... Um, so I've required the stock taking, so that might be a lot of staff time as well, doing the stock take in terms of downtime. Um, so I've required them to do at least four stock takes this year. Generally they get two done. It sounds very, very small, but they need to do more. Um, and the other thing I've asked them to do is keep the stock levels about 25% higher than what they normally do. Uh, but you'll find a lot of that time that, that there is more time than the actual um, you know, loss of stock and uh, pilferage and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's, it is something that we've talked about um, trying to do more regular stock takes. So if Paul was here, he'd probably be off to answer that one because um, they work with the water unit to, um, to do the stock take. Um, and it's, it does take quite a bit of time because we, we have stock on trucks. Uh, three different areas, and then we have the main stock area. Um, we also have a stock person uh, who's basically, um, he's sort of half semi-retired, that used to be one of the articulation workers. Uh, and uh, 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 No, no, it's uh, Doug Stevenson, and, uh, and that would be some of his time as well. Councillor, did you hear a question this time? No, I don't. Well, you put your hand up, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Well, waving back. <laughs> yes. Any further questions? Yeah. Yep. Just for curious, what is their stock level? In terms of dollars or In terms of dollars items. compared with what cost of doing some of the stock takes? Uh, they, 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 they seem to um, move between about 95000 and 165000 of true value of stock. And um, the, right, the write-offs and write-ons go between 2000 and about 10000 What I'm getting is it's costing us $45,000 to stock take ninety. Yep. Five thousand dollars of the stock. Yeah. We we we've pulled the stock take right right back over the years, and we tend to use the suppliers as our stock um, holding uh, bins. So you know, the, like a Wakefield type thing, uh, and we try and uh, do it through purchase orders and and as we require it. But yeah, it's a fair call. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, part of that forty-five thousand. You, you, I mean, you talk about your your, your stock taker, but would that does that include a storm and someone who's who's storm, actually yeah. checking stuff in and out as well? Yeah. So there's actually part-time wage in there for that sort of thing as well as a stock taker. Just trying to get clarification. It, 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 it is. Um, I suppose I should add to it as well. Probably the turnover of stock is the key thing. Um, what actually goes through the water unit is is probably more like. Um, a half a million dollars so that's that's different again so it's, this is only what we hold in stock rather than what comes through the unit and mm. jobs okay any further questions okay thanks Jeff um, for presenting that report um, now going to go along to page 654 welcome to the table Sarah Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, as you're well aware, much of this budget um, is related to servicing the costs associated with our many, many meetings. Um, and with this term, we have increased the number of meetings and the number of committees than previous term, um, along with a number of working parties and a additional outside meetings that we also service as part of the overall um, scope of our area. And we also have the, what we call the creative administration team, um, no longer called the, the typing department, um, and they handle all the 
um, brochures, flyers, advertising, general templated type documents that are, are handled both um, for in-house use and for public consumption, um, which is separate from the graphic design position that's associated with comms. Um, the two work in together in, in conjunction on various projects, but their actual type of work is quite defined and different. Um, with regard to the overall envelope of, of finance, we have um, basically stayed within the same envelope. Um, we did have to obviously cut through the, the last annual plan and COVID, um, but we have had reallocated funding um, around the, the budget, hence some of the um, decreases and some columns increasing. For an example, we have on our budget uh, lines the four standing committees, but we have eight committees. So the ad hoc uh, heading actually covers those other four committees and will also cover hearings and those types of meetings that come up throughout the year. Um, the utilities and roading this year is having meetings monthly rather than every other month and the planning and regulation committee is from about the middle of the year expected to decrease in the number of meetings required particularly while the district plan is running in conjunction over the next financial year so that level of service that we provide to that department which is just at the committee level not at their briefings and their workshops that they've been having that's covered under the district plan uh, budget so we've decreased that so we've actually reallocated more in a line where our staff are actually going to what meetings um, but staying within that window also one of the differences that you may have noticed is the mural project line that is um, is actually comprised of a number of components that have been lumped together however after a discussion with Jeff in the last few days we're going to split that out um, to better define it so the actual mural office expenses will be only a few thousand dollars um, and relatively small. The bulk of it will be under a banner of um, civic community events. events and that will cover things like the community service awards and also our citizenship um, which is starting up again uh, this year as far as the actual events go. Uh, there are also things like mural task force for jobs school prize are giving some extra trophies and things, some reads that may come up through the year that is not associated with ANZAC. And ANZAC, um, the budgets there are primarily for road management and assisting the RSAs and the reads that we have for that um, throughout the district events on that. So you will see the next budget round that area um, defined a little clearer. Same grand total, but split out a little bit better. Um, we've already mentioned in the commentary about the international relations. Um, and are happy to take any questions. Councillor Redmond. No, thank you, Sarah. On page 658, uh, just under mural projects, you've got catering. Um, yes. The taxpayers' union delights in knowing what councillors spend on, on food yes. at meetings. We have had requests and responses. Right. I just wondered, does this figure include catering for any other type of event, or is it just for us? <coughs> this is generally for like the next three days of meetings. Um, some of the the larger meetings through the year like the LTP as you know on a, a normal council day or a committee day it's um, pretty light on the catering of basically a packet of biscuits um, 
and that's also why the catering has virtually gone from the committees as well um, and been reallocated back there. Um, also the end of year function that the council or end of term function that the council may have. I know last last year you chose not to but um, so that's also been accounted for but it is not oh and also if you have visiting councils come those types of things that we would get catering in but it is primarily for this group. Um, Oops, I, thank you. I was just wondering if it could have been split up into various categories such as visiting councils from other authorities or even different from feeding us. I well, we are we, feeding you at the same time as we're feeding them because you are meeting collectively together. Yeah. It's not that they are meeting staff or management, they are meeting with you. So you are sharing in there. So I, no, I, I would say it's a little bit difficult to I do the breakdown. I wasn't suggesting pruning what, what we receive, yeah. but just reallocating well, it somewhere else. Happen. Well, <laughs> effectively, we are meeting where we can with the four neighbouring councils once a year hosting it here and once a year them hosting us all being well so in the great scheme of things we're not talking a lot of money we're talking under a thousand dollars for those four meetings well and truly under a thousand dollars in fact probably under five hundred dollars for the the four meetings yeah i think we sarah and sarah <laughs> yeah hold on yes yeah, sarah and i had have had a talk about the catering budget and it very is very very lean uh, we haven't allowed a lot, and uh, we were talking about um, uh, doubling that because of uh, what you're actually referring to, is that a lot of the catering you do isn't the council, it's visiting, uh, visiting um, business and relationships which we have to um, host. And so, if, uh, look, I think if the Ratepayers Association looked at our books, they'd probably actually add, add money into it based on uh, what they see. So it is very lean to have five thousand uh, dollars when you're talking about all uh, the daytime meetings that you have and we have to cater for. Yeah. And there are some other events that we've got well, coming up with Jim's farewell and others as well that need to be accounted for somewhere. So we we're having a brief conversation about that the other day. So I leave Jeff and Sarah to work out what the numbers were. But in my own personal mural projects, it's slightly it's been no more than five thousand is the amount. There and I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not an expensive person in that regard, so I don't need 39k. But I appreciate what Sarah's. It just needs to be reallocated and appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One well, more question is actually around that. We've got a new CEO coming, we have a CEO going. We've got a lot of functions that we would normally not have in a 12 month period. We have our hoeing. around those. Um, and looking in these budgets, in my view, we are far too lean. I mean, we've got 20 years of service of one particular gentleman that we need to be um, celebrating at the end of his, um, not just us, but staff and so on. I mean, we, are, we are far too lean on I'm this I'm not budget. sure that Jim's farewell is actually accounted for in this particular it's budget. Not. I'm not sure where that's been allocated it's, from. It's not, and I've had a conversation with Jeff about that, and we will be allocating for that we need to um, make sure that it's done properly so if we could leave that to Jeff and Sarah but um, how that's accounted for but it, and I'll let you know what those costs are but you'll know what they are so nothing being hidden but it's just not reflecting that here but it's a good question here. oh sorry no no it's time it's time we do look, it's it's all well and good being prudent and careful but actually it puts a lot on people and um, we do need to just think about that you know if we host it at our homes and we do all those sort of things it's you know i don't think i don't think that our rate payers would really um, be too concerned well, some may be but too concerned if we do things properly uh inappropriately we're not extravagant in how we do things so it's making sure that it's not overloading people as well uh, in that task so anyway we we'll leave Jeff and Sarah to work it out, they'll come back. Any further questions? Kirsten. This is probably my question for Jeff, actually, overall. If, if we look at just the direct expenditure on 6458, 
it's 86,000 over forecast. How are you going to reflect that in commentary? And given that some of this year was quite exceptional as well, but how are you going to reflect that back when the rest of the council is cutting that we've actually gone up 86,000 total indirect expenditure from the forecast? Yeah, at the bottom of the page, which every other department's tried to either stay status quo or cut, yeah. uh, and the commentary doesn't reflect those increases at all. You, you, you're talking about 2.3%, which is less than inflation. Yeah, yeah, but other departments have been asked to cut. Um, they have been, uh, uh, yes, they have been uh, asked to cut, but they're not two, they're a lot more than 2.3%, some of them. Okay. This is just a true reflection on cost, and I think, you know, when you look at uh, what we cut out for COVID to get to that 1.5% mm -hmm. and to have only 23 on top of it, I think that's, that's a pretty reasonable uh, position to be in. We're pretty it's much just, how, just how the communication. How do you explain uh, it? Yeah. Well, we, wouldn't be, explaining, we wouldn't be explaining this one because it's not what we consider significant. It's, it's underneath in inflation. Okay. We're absolutely on the bare minimum of, of operating. Yeah, I'm, I'm not questioning that even yeah. slightly, but I mean, I'm just talking about when you look at it from a, just a, a straight layman's point of view in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just for example, going back to 657, that the training budget doubling nearly, is that because it was halved last year and it's gone back up? Uh, it's up the top of the line training. Yes, I don't know. Right. This is on two uh, six fifty eight. The forecast was five eight seven zero, and it's now ten eight nine zero. That's that one's for you, Sarah. Oh, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that most of it be staff time. But this is training, a training yeah. budget. Yes, we Which have. most of the departments have cut. And we'll have staff time and training, um, and the training budget. But now this is training of staff. I think looking at the budget, yes, we did we did cut um, the training budgets and keeping that to a, a reasonable uh, medium, but um, that may have come back in as a maybe an automatic um, reflection post COVID. So I just need to check that Thank and you. come back. Thank you. Okay. okay, sorry. Would a solution for that be the the comment that Jeff made that you? want to bring on some new young people and do some training this year and, and, and upskill them? Uh, no, that's in, a, that's in a different, that's in the water unit budget. Um, this one here is um, just in the secretary. I can double check. Yeah. Yeah. Any further questions? Okay, so um, there will be some, re, as Sarah said, some, some changes to this, not going to affect the overall item and, and some clarity around the training as has, has been requested so that'll come back as an answer um, Kirsten to say. Um, look, um, is there any comments anyone wishes to make? Kirsten? Just quickly, um, the budget's super super important and what we're doing but how we communicate it is just as important because people are looking at this with a fine tooth comb so we need to state why <coughs> things have increased. So if there's an increase on forecast from last year we've got to give a clear explanation in commentary going forward and that wasn't reflected in this government's report. I, there were like five different areas that hadn't been reflected, changed from forecast. So if that can be reflected in the report, that would be really good. Uh, Sandra? Sandra, can you, can you use the mic please? Thank you. Page 657. Um, corporate management insurance. We've got a, a new line and then this poor call funds have gone down from 300,000 to 60 and stay at about that level. So is that a reallocation of some things in here or what, what's happened to you? Yeah, I, think, I think just ignore the insurance line for now. Um, we've done it across the council to check whether our insurance is, but that was a, an amount put in here for an increase in insurance. Uh, we just need to check. I've, got uh, the finance team looking at that. Our insurance looks like it's about 10% above. If you look, add, add up all the accounts across the board, overall we're 10% above and that's about where we want it to be. Uh, so what's been indicated from our insurance company uh, brokers. Okay. Uh, Councillor, sorry, did you have a further question, Councillor Stewart? Sorry? Did you have a further question? No, no. Just Councillor Doody? 
you use your mic, please. Thank you. He's asked us about the honorarium, please. Come on, 658. This is your um, all elected members. Um, Sorry? This is all elected members' okay. remuneration. Yep. And because we can't forecast uh, how much the authority is going to increase or, or amend future, we have looked at Burl information and used an average of 3% based on what, what elected members are receiving today, plus 3% going forward. So in future years that will be adjusted, but we don't know until at June, um, May, June, any changes from the Remuneration Authority. So we've had to do our uh, best estimates there based on Burl and that 3% increase. If anyone was looking at that, they'd be wanting to know what that was for, so... That is against, um, yeah. The, there's one line for councillors and mayor, and then there's the other lines reflected in the community boards as well, so there are 35 members overall. Is there any further questions? Any comments? Sarah, just on our behalf, it's your budget, so thank you for all that you do to, to support us, you and your team, the governance team, we're exceptionally well supported. It's been a, last year particularly was a, well, for all of us, was the most trying year, but keeping us all functioning and making sure that we were connected with meetings and have been well supported, thank you. Um, we really appreciate it, and particularly as we've gone through the CEO appointment process, I know you've been very integral to me in terms of support and advice, making sure we had the process right and on track. So I just want to say thanks for all that you do to keep us on track. And we do have a very lean budget, and, and that, you know, we've just been talking about that, but also the, all the questions that come through as well, Prudence is also important, um, but there are some aspects that we've probably just got to be a bit more reflective on because we probably are just a bit too prudent So, uh, in some places. But there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just making sure that we've got adequate amounts there at time. So thank you, Sarah, for what you do. I appreciate you your comments, Mr Mayor, and if you thought last year was busy, you were right. Um, we used to manage about 200-odd meetings per year on your behalf. Now we're doing 300 plus meetings per year on your behalf with the same number of staff. Yeah, you're doing a great, we appreciate it, Sarah. Thank you very much. Um, and supportive staff briefings there too. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot more meetings than people actually realise that go on. So, um, Sandra, have you got your pin up for a reason? And for the bottom of page 660 where you've got the valuation, you've got Woody and Sefton Advisory Group, we've got three advisory groups in a community board. Should they be all community boards? Okay no team, um, well I think we've got to a good point today. Um, <laughs> um, well we could, but I think in fairness to him we should leave it till tomorrow. <laughs> 